The team was to make a trilogy of side-scrollers that would be distributed by Apogee as shareware. To get them started, Scott Miller sent out a check to the team for $2,000. Everyone involved knew that once Keen was finished and uploaded to bulletin board systems everywhere, this would have a life-changing impact. Let's take a look at these. Between 1990 and 1991, the team released a series of side-scrollers consisting of six games in a spin-off, referred to as the Commander Keen series. Although there were many games made around this time in a similar style, the Commander Keen game stood out with its smooth gameplay, simple controls, and a unique cast of characters. The protagonist of this series is Billy Blaze, an 8-year-old genius with an IQ of 314, but you play as his alter ego, Commander Keen, Defender of the Earth. Let's take a look at the first three games in the series, referred to as Invasion of the Vorticons. Episodes 1 through 3 respectively are Marooned on Mars, The Earth Explodes, and Keen Must Die. The first episode, as implied by its title, finds Commander Keen stranded on Mars after the Vorticons steal four vital components from his ship, better known as the Bean with Bacon Mega Rocket. That's right, the Bean with Bacon Mega Rocket. A name so incredibly stupid that it's just awesome. All the games have two components to it, a world map featuring a top-down component where players can select their next level, and a side-scrolling gameplay for each level. This is the part where you'll spend most of your time in. In each level, you will come across various items that increase your score. You have to find keys to unlock doors, and then get to the exit. The four components from your ship will be in four different levels, each of which can be found at the end. The hostility of the enemies will vary. Some of them will block you or push you into hazards. Others will hunt you down when they see you. Your weapon is a ray gun with limited ammo, but most enemies will go down in one shot. Items to replenish your ray gun are very uncommon, so you have to pick your shots carefully or prepare to dodge enemies and their attacks. The game itself is not too difficult, but it has a control scheme that is just confusing. Control is to jump, alt is to use the pogo stick, and pressing both simultaneously fires your ray gun. Considering the vast amount of buttons on a keyboard, I'm really not sure what was going through their head. In any case, the controls are not too difficult either, but they still require time to get used to. If you use a controller, this can feel either natural or just plain ridiculous, depending on which controller you use. The second episode is called The Earth Explodes. Your objective is to destroy the Tantalus rays on the Vorticon mothership hovering above the Earth. Like the first episode, it has the same control scheme. Ammo is much more common, but so are the enemies. Most of the time, you'll be blasting your way through because a lot of places are just packed with them. And to top it off, you'll get killed in one hit. That's right, you have no life bar, but it's easy enough to not die. You can jump over and dodge most of the enemies and their attacks. All it takes is a little skill to get through each level, and that's how it should be. How about the graphics? For comparison purposes, the graphics are similar to that of those you find in NES games, but the three games offer more colors and sharper images. Then there's the audio, which is of course, lacking. It's just a handful of sound effects from the PC speaker. Considering the infancy of sound cards at the time, this is easily forgivable, but the lack of any sort of music make me envious of NES games. The third episode takes place on the planet of Vorticon 6, where Commander Keen must go up against the Grand Intellect and stop him from destroying the Earth. You have to go through various cities and fortifications in order to reach the castle of the Grand Intellect. Practically everything is out to kill you this time around, which is why it's called Keen Must Die. This is the last episode of the trilogy. There's really not much more to say about this one, since all three games have the same gameplay and use the same engine. 
You'll also notice many of the signs present throughout the three games contain alien text. This is known as the standard galactic alphabet. At first glance, it looks like a very complex language to learn. In reality, this is just plain English with the Roman characters substituted with strange symbols. This alphabet was used extensively in the Commander Keen games, particularly in the third game, where you frequently come across signs. It's a small part of what defines Commander Keen, but it's these little things put together that make it so great. So how did these games come about in the first place? The three games were actually made while John Carmack and the gang worked at Soft Disk Publishing, borrowing company property during the weekends and releasing the games behind their backs. Apparently, their operations were discovered, and they were forced into making some games for them through legal arrangements. One of these games was known as Keen Dreams. Some call it the Lost Episode, some call it Episode 3.5, others call it Episode 7. Whatever the case, this was published by Softdisk and not Apogee. Right from the start, you'll notice the graphics are completely different. Running under a newer engine, the levels are shown from a tilted perspective, and there's also a status box at the upper left corner of the screen, something that really should have been in the first three games. The story behind Keen Dreams revolves around him not eating his vegetables and getting sent to his room. He then falls asleep and vegetables attack him in his dream. Another reason why you have to eat your vegetables, kids. There's also several changes to the gameplay. You don't have the pogo stick anymore, and instead of the ray gun, you have flower power. Yeah! This turns enemies into flowers only temporarily. As you can already guess, your enemies are vegetables like potatoes, broccoli, and whatever that is. Damn! There's no way to kill them, so you have to rely solely on evading enemies to get through the levels. You can also move up and down poles to reach new platforms. Out of all the Keen games, this one has the biggest gameplay flaw. In order to take on the final boss, you need to collect bombs in certain levels. This is what you use to kill him. If you don't collect them in a level when you finish it, you don't get a second chance. You need at least 12 bombs to fight the final boss. If you complete every level and you don't have enough, you can't finish the game. So what do you do? You restart from the beginning. This was a real pain for me the first time around, so you have to explore every inch of each level to ensure you collect the bombs. Not collecting bombs in the levels will make it impossible to win, and it's because of this, along with the absence of the pogo stick and the presence of flower power, that I would say this is my least favorite game of the series. The game itself is not too bad, but it definitely could have been better. Here's something else worth noting. The game supports the use of a Sound Blaster card for audio. However, there's no music in the game. The reason for this is because Softdisk wanted to put the game on a 5 and a quarter inch floppy and it only holds 360 kilobytes. Any music originally intended to be in the game had to be taken out to make it fit. So, if you want to play the game with some audio, you're stuck with PC speaker or ad-lib sound effects. The first few games got the ball rolling for Commander Keen, but the next few games improves on every aspect of the series.